Hello again, this is Gabriel from TruePixel and today I'm going to show you some basic notions for animation in Cinema 4D. First, we need to understand that animation in Cinema 4D means that something changes or moves in time. For that, we need a timeline, which is this bar over here in the animation panel. Time in Cinema 4D is measured in frames, which are these numbers here on the timeline. An animation records what happens between two points in time or between two frames. To animate something in Cinema 4D, we need to establish a starting point or a starting frame, the ending point or the ending frame, the movement, what we want between them, and this button to record that movement from start to end. Let's try this with this cube we have here. Let's say we want to move this cube from this point to this point using what we have already learned. So we will establish the starting position for the cube we go to the beginning of the timeline and we record its position here by pressing this keyframe button. We see it now appeared a blue marker on the timeline that shows us it recorded its position. Then we move the time to where we want to have the animated cube. We move the cube to the position we want it to be at the end and we press the keyframe button again. Now we see the animation between the two blue markers is 90 frames long and it also created a blue line in the viewport so we can see by adjusting the slider what happens with the cube. You can check your animation by playing with the slider on the timeline or by pressing this play button here and watch it move by itself in the animated process that's already done. By default Cinema 4D shows you a timeline of 90 frames but you can add more frames by raising this number here to whatever you want. Let's add 1000. Now we can see that the general bar here is smaller now, but by holding its end with the mouse, we can drag it and we can see the whole timeline in our viewport to play with. If you want to focus on where your animation is made, simply drag the bar back and enlarge the timeline so we can see what's going on there. As a quick reference, if you want to know how long your animation lasts, keep in mind that 30 frames on this timeline are one second in real time. In this case, our animation has 90 frames, which is three seconds. You can adjust the number of frames per second in your render settings or your project settings, depending on how smooth you want your movement to be. Now, if we want to animate this cube further, we just need to repeat the steps and the operations that we did before. So, we, we will have a starting point, which is here. We will choose more frames for the next position. We will move the cube to the next position and we will record the new position by pressing the keyframe button. Now we see a new spline of time has been added and the animation is continuous. If we want to add some movement or rotations between our already animated frames, we just need to choose the point in time where we want that to happen. Let's say in the middle of the first sequence here. We need to 
rotate the cube and record a new movement by pressing the keyframe button. Now we can see that our animation has added a new keyframe with a new position for the cube and everything is constant. Let's do that again in the middle of the second sequence where we want our cube to rotate 100 degrees that way. We add a new keyframe. We also can see in the timeline that every recorded keyframe we're pressing adds a marker. Now our animation looks like this. Another thing we can do with our animation timeline is to increase or decrease the distance between the keyframes so we can make our animation slower or faster. To do that, you just need to select the marker until it gets orange and move it to the new endpoint that you want. Now, the time in between the frames is bigger and the animation moves slower. This way you can closely adjust your movement and all the details you want between the start and the end point for your animation. And now for another way to affect your animated spline is to simply click on the frames in the viewport until they get orange and drag them to create a new position of that time during the animation process. So now your animation happens in the same timeline but with different coordinates. A very important notion that you need to learn is that the timeline and the animation frames are individual for each selected object. So if I'm adding a new object to the scene, we can see the animation of the previous object has disappeared because we are not having that object selected. We have the new object selected. So what you need to understand is that each object has its own timeline. As we have the sphere selected, the timeline does not affect it because we have no animation made for the sphere, but we can still see the cube moving because it has a pre-recorded animation for itself. If we click the cube again, we can still see its animation. Adding animation to a new object, we just need to go back to the start of the timeline and do the same procedure for the sphere. We add a keyframe, we add a point in time. Let's say we want this sphere to go up when the cube passes under. We add the frame, then we roll the time. We want the sphere to go back at the frame, go at the end, we move the sphere into the new position and add the frame. Let's see the whole animation. Now each object has its own timeline. So if we shift through the objects, we see each object with its course. Therefore, remember that anything you want to animate in Cinema 4D works on the same timeline, but has different keyframe ranges. Let's see now other things we can animate and how to animate them besides 
the objects that already are animated in our scene. Let's create a camera. Click here to go inside the camera. Move the timeline to the start. We choose a camera position to look at the objects. And now selected camera has an empty timeline. We can add animation keyframes for it. So let's add a start keyframe. Let's say we want at the frame 100 to see the objects from here. We add keyframe. Then on frame 200, we want to follow the objects up to here, keyframe. And at the end of the animation, we want to see the objects from the top and add an end kit frame. Now the animation looks like this. This means that each object has its own animation on the same timeline. Let's get out of the camera and watch the animation from the outside. Now we can see the camera has its own movement. that we can also adjust in real time and then go back to the camera and see what we did. Once you delete all the objects that were animated in your scene, you can see that all the frames have disappeared and only the timeline remained. And now for more in-depth animations, let's take a simple object and let me show you another way to animate the properties for the object. Let's say we want to animate the size or the shape of this object by making it from this shape to this shape. If we try simple as we learned that we just add a keyframe here, move the timeline, adjust it and add another keyframe, we can see nothing happens. Why? Because we didn't apply the keyframe buttons correctly. Let's see how we do that. I'm gonna undo this. If we look in the attributes manager here, we can see the object properties. We have this property on the X axis. We have this one and we have this one. Therefore, we need to animate these properties in order to have our desired animations. To do that, we can see that each property has a round button next to it. This round button here is the correspondent for this keyframe button recorder here. This means that if we go to the beginning of the timeline and adjust a start size, we need to click this button here. Now we can see the button became red just as this keyframe button here and it recorded that the size of our cube is 20 centimeters in this frame. Then we will move the frame here, adjust the size, and then record the new position and the new size. Now we have our desired shape shift. To do more, we need to play with the other properties. For example, in this frame, we want this size on the Y axis. 
in the beginning we want this size and in the end we want this size here so every movement every property that changes everything you want to affect on your object needs to be recorded in the desired frame with the desired parameters and clicking the record keyframe button so let's see what happens now let's see we want to add a color to our cube make it a yellow and we want this color to change during the animation this means that if we just click the keyframe buttons nothing will happen so we will need to affect the color for this so we will click on the color we have here the attributes manager for the color and we see that the color has the same button beside therefore at the beginning of the animation we want this color click the frame in the middle of the animation we want this color we click the frame in the end of the animation we want this color we record the frame so now we can see what happens let's also add a rotation to this cube by going at the beginning of the timeline we select a keyframe and at the end of the timeline we rotate it 180 degrees and then click the keyframe button so basically what you need to remember is that each operation each edit each property you change needs to have a different keyframe range on the timeline otherwise nothing will happen so you need to be very sharp and just keep on practicing the order of the operations on the buttons you have to press to achieve your desired animation This concludes our short tutorial on basics of animations in Cinema 4D. I hope you like my videos. Please subscribe and follow my next videos to see what's up.